Hey YouTube, this is MindTech. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be testing out and reviewing this Max Digital 3 terabyte hard drive. I haven't seen a lot of information about these drives online. The big catch with them is that they are 3 terabyte, but they only cost around $45, which is an incredibly good value for a drive of that size. Plus they are 7200 RPM, but they are in fact used and they have been remanufactured under this generic label. So I'm going to do some stress tests on this and make sure that this is a good and reliable drive to put into my production system. All right, it comes in some very generic packaging. Let's cut open that label and get right in here. It does not come with the SATA cable. These are typically like a Western Digital, a Hitachi, a Seagate hard drive that has had all of its branding stripped off of it. It's been reformatted by, in this case, Max Digital, and then sold on Amazon or on eBay as a working drive. It says on this bag, do not forget to format your hard drive, and I'll show you that process in this video. Alrighty, so I have my case now. I'm gonna take off the back panel first. And although it is dusty, it should still be working pretty well here. I'm going to plug it in with a separate SATA cable and a separate power connector just so I can copy over the files. And I do also have a spare SATA cable. So all I have to do is just plug that onto an existing connector. And the configuration I have right now is a one terabyte laptop hard drive, which I'm going to keep. And then the one terabyte Western digital drive, which I intend to remove. I'll try and move all of this cable mess. Here we go. Now I have access to the tray where I need to put this white label drive. Make sure the SATA connectors are facing me. Again, not a lot of clearance. Dropped this in my case. I'm gonna use a flashlight. This is certainly gonna make it a lot easier. So I have to hold this drive here. It's not designed that well in ZXT. Like, come on. I've got that lit up and aligned. Screw is partially, at least in the hole. Move this SATA cable, bring this power cable here, and get it plugged right in. Looks like I did unplug the power cable for my SSD here. Yep, okay, the power connector is okay because the problem is that these SATA connectors, they can break really easily. So you gotta be careful when you're trying to plug in and unplug your power connectors. Accidentally dropped that on the motherboard. Gotta pick that up and connect her right in again. Here's the power connector that I need. So I just need to feed it on back through here. You should be able to get this one plugged right in. So now all I really have left to do is get the case panels put back on. Now let's get on over to the setup, do some tests on this drive just to make sure that it is as reliable as I need it to be before I transfer all of my precious data on over to it. I was able to boot into Windows now, but like I suspected, it is not showing up on the side and that is because it needs to be formatted. And this is fairly common when you buy a new hard drive, so I'm not too worried about this. All you really have to do is search up disk management and now it just says that I need to initialize disk one and I'm going to do this as a uh, GPT partition. This is the one that Windows suggests. And as you can see, we have 3000 gigabytes unallocated. So it is in fact the size that it advertised. The three terabytes comes from GIB versus GB. So now I'm going to create a new simple volume on this drive and it'll assign itself letter G and I'll call this bulk storage. And I'll just click on finished. And it's gonna do a quick format on the drive. And now I have access to the hard drive. I only have about 200 gigabytes used, more than likely for the file allocation table, just to make sure that it knows where everything is. And I do have 2.72 terabytes free. So now I'm going to run the disk speed command, which is going to not only test the speed at which this hard drive can read and write files, but it's also going to be able to do a long-term stress test on the drive. And that will make sure that it is in fact a reliable drive. This is a Microsoft utility. Now I have to go to the directory where it's stored. Now this specifies the size. It's going 
going to write a 50 megabyte file. It specifies how much you're going to be reading or writing, so I'm gonna do half and half. And it also specifies the time that it's going to take, so I'm only gonna do 10 seconds for this test. Once I press enter, there is a little bit of a spike. So now if we go and look into the results, it did use all of the first two cores of the CPU. It was reading at around 900 megabytes per second and writing at also around 900 megabytes per second. So those are the speeds that you will get with this drive. Now I'm actually going to go and benchmark my Western digital drive, which I've had for about five years, because I wanna see if the speed of these two mechanical hard drives compare because both of them are 7200 RPM. Copy paste, change this on over to an F. There is another spike. There is the data file at 500 megabytes. It was actually kind of slower. This was only running at about 1.69 gigabytes per second. And the reads and writes, they were similar, kind of minus 50 megabytes or so. Comparative to a Western Digital Blue one terabyte drive, it is still marginally faster. So I'm going to copy over this 2.81 gigabyte video from my scratch disk. SSD, which is running over the same SATA 3 interface. It looks like it's running at about 500 megabytes per second, and then it went down to around 150 megabytes per second. Let's just do one more test. This is a folder with about five gigabytes of files. And since it's doing a random test, it peaked at about 400 here, and then it's going to go and plateau at that 150 megabytes per second. Let's see, it slowed down even a bit more to around 120 megabytes per second. But still, this is in megabytes, not megabits. So that's actually a pretty good speed. That is at least fast enough for what I'm doing. So now I'm going to just copy over that same video from the SSD on over to the Western Digital Drive. Okay, so this did again maxed around 400 megabytes per second, and you see that same plateau where it might have a bit more strenuous data. That was slightly faster, I'd say, but again, that's just margin of error. So I'd say compared to most mechanical hard drives that you'd find on the market, this is going to offer the same speeds. So now what I'm going to do is run this test again. I'm going to bump the write up to about 75, and I'm going to bump this up to about 1000 megabytes because normally my videos are in excess of a thousand gigabytes. I'm going to run it for eight hours. So this is just going to give a really good stress test of the drive. The hard drive is running at 100%. Well, I'll update you guys later once this test is complete. It's been running for about two and a half hours. It's about 100% active. It is still maintaining the rates that it was maintaining at the beginning. And if I look at the bulk storage, this is making a data file that is about one gigabyte. It's been pretty reliable so far. All right, so I've been running the benchmark program for about three and a half hours now. I think that's enough time to really get a good idea of whether or not the drive is reliable. So as you can see, it's 1.13 p.m. I started it around nine o'clock and it is still running at 100%. And like I mentioned before, it's running at 125 megabytes per second. It was fairly constant while it was reading and writing the data, and then it did a huge plateau once we stopped. Now I'm just gonna go and run that command one more time just to make sure that the hard drive is still at the same level as it was when I first ran it. I can hear it actually writing stuff now. I wasn't able to hear that in the morning. And now if I open up the test results, it looks like it's actually a bit faster at the reading and about the same at the writing. I'm fairly impressed. I did not degrade over the stress test and it went strong the entire four hours. I can certainly hear that now. I'm not sure if you can hear the hard drive, so that might be some sort of sign of wear and tear. So now I'm just going to open up my render farm, which has all of the videos basically ever created for this YouTube channel. And I'm gonna control X and control V it on over to my bulk storage. It is running at around the same speed as it was in the morning. And it'll take about an hour and 35 minutes for this 900 gigabytes of data to transfer. 
Alright, so just as a quick update, I have been using this hard disk drive for about 10 months now, and I have some comments about it. First thing though, it is 100% reliable. I have two partitions that I'm using, the render farm, which has over 1.3 terabytes of data on it, and the games 2 partition, which has over 400 gigabytes of data on it. And I've been able to play games off of this drive, and I've also been dumping hundreds of gigabytes of data both on and off of the drive, and I also fully encrypted this drive using BitLocker and I recently decrypted the drive and if you've done any drive encryption before you'd know that that is an incredibly strenuous operation. If I run this quick WMIC command all four of the drives on my computer are reporting an okay status including this white label drive and I also ran a systems diagnostic test using performance monitor and if I expand the disk checks area the smart data does not predict a failure on any of the drives and it has not detected any logical disk dirty bits. So that means that this hard drive is still as reliable as it was 10 months ago, and it has been working very well since I put all of my data on it. The only complaints that I have about the drive, first of all, is the speed, and this is something that you'd find with any other hard drive, including like a Western Digital. You'd really have to bump up to something like 10,000 RPM to get any faster speed. Although I'm still getting the full SATA 6 interface speed, it's still just not great to play large games on because you really have to wait for them to load. The second problem though is specific to this drive and that is the noise. It hasn't gotten any noise or at least to my ear since but it is very noticeable when you are booting up your computer or using it for regular things like putting data on it or reading data off of it. It almost kind of sounds like something is bashing on the hard drive or bashing on the computer case, and it really reminds me of older hard drives from like the 90s or early 2000s. So that is something that you should keep in mind if you are considering purchasing this drive. So three terabytes for $50. I'm very happy with the drive, I think it was a great purchase, and it's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Other than the sound, I would 100% recommend the drive, but of course take my experience with a grain of salt. They are refurbished drives, so that means you may have a completely different experience, and you may get a dud. And I personally also would not trust it with very sensitive data, and I wouldn't want to put it in, let's say, a NAS environment. We are going to have it running 24-7. My use case is it really only runs at little short intervals of writing 50 to 100 gigabytes of data. What would be really helpful for other viewers also is if you could leave your experience down in the comments below, just to kind of get a general idea of how people feel about this and whether or not these drives are overall reliable. So with that said, guys, Guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye bye.